For many years now, the 79 series has been one of the ultimate touring platforms. Whoa! However, is it still the best option, or are modern dual cabs, like this new Ranger here, a better option to start with? I think you'll agree, both of these are absolute dream rigs. Well today, I've got the keys to a 79 and the Mitz Ranger. So, we're putting them head to head. And at the end of it all, we're gonna figure out which one we choose. Now, you may be wondering why we're testing the 79 against something like a Ford Ranger, when just a few years ago, comparing a dual cab ute to a 79 series would have been a complete one-sided victory. However, the new Ford Ranger is sitting at a much higher price bracket close to $80,000. Plus, it's got a V6 diesel in it, which they claim hits similar power numbers to the 79's V8. And Sean I recently judged it to be the best tested four-wheel drive in ute of the year. In many departments, this new Ranger is comparable to the 79. But is the Ranger really as capable as the 79? Well, I'm here today with Az from Mitz Alloy, who specializes in turning utes like these into tourers and he's brought along a fully kitted out dual cab model of both the Ranger and the 79. We've got three different categories to test both of these vehicles in. And by the end, we hope to know which one of the two is the better touring four wheel drive. Let's get stuck into it. It's always a little bit of a nerve wracking experience getting into a brand new vehicle up what most people would consider to be a pretty committing little hill. Keep coming mate, keep coming. Yeah, perfect starting that one. Now turn, left hand, yeah. <laughs> Feels like I could do it, but it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I might just throw some rocks in that back wheel there. Well, it's one of those things where I could, I reckon I could drive that, yeah. but if I don't, I could go on the side. Yeah. And that's, you don't want that. I think that's it. Might have to give it a little bump. You're right. You sure? Yeah, just stay on that line. Just a little bump. Hey! It's always a there we go. You feel like you can do it. Yeah. But at the same time, you know if you don't. Yep. Like, what's your point of no return? Exactly. And it's a new vehicle, not used to it. But I mean, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So it's a touring rig. Yeah. And we're, a pretty tough track. And we're doing this with it. We've got the worst to come yet. Though. Yeah, I know. So let's not we'll see how we soon. go. <laughs> Rightio, mate. Bring it through. Stay on that line. A lot of sensors going off. Hear that? New vehicles. Perfect. The back tyre is about to come up. Yep. Might have to just go back a touch and bump it up this little bit. Problem we've got is the sensors sense there's something in the way and they, it disables you. One of those modern car problems. Let me just give it a bump from here. Steve, you might have to go a little bit right hand down. That's it. Keep going, stay on that line. Yep, perfect. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> mate. <laughs> mate, that was, you, that was great. Okay, modern vehicle, first of all, it's an assault on the sensors. I've got yeah, ding, a ding, 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 few ding. chimes going yeah. off, isn't there? Uh, and then <laughs> I lost power when the sensors come in contact with a wall. Yeah. So you've got to come back and punch it over so you pull yep. the sensors. Yep. Other than that, man, honestly, Oh, yes. I've got air conditioning, Barry Manilow's playing. Oh, you're looking, not super, one drip of sweat. No, I'm super comfy. In fact, I'm glad I drove it and you walked up. Mate, it's um, crazy. It is crazy. That worked well. Would I suggest you do this in an 80 plus thousand dollar car? No, this is more of a luxury car, isn't it's it? It's more of a luxury this, touring Especially vehicle. this one. Yeah. This is designed, this track is Comfort. designed for an old GQ. Oh, yeah, this thing is GQs and, and 80s all day, every 100%. day. 100%. But can you do it? You can. You can do Absolutely it. Absolutely you can. Would you? Let's, uh, ah. let's <laughs> leave that till the end. Let's leave that till the end. <laughs> All right, the big 79's getting fired up behind me. Technically, this is 100% a touring rig, and look, let's be fair, really doesn't have a place on this track, or does it? Let's find out. Another benefit is, that I like about the Land Cruiser, the idle up button. So you can drive this a little bit more like an automatic and use those revs. Straight through the gap, as if he's done it before. Straight, no, oh no, that's, yeah, keep that line, keep that line. Well, this is gonna be interesting, see how we go. You've gone up okay on that wheel. Let's just see if you can hold it for the rear. This is absolutely... It's looking good. It's looking nice. Oh, keep coming. Keep coming. It's like it was when I was in the other car. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. A little bit of 
a little bit of passenger. Yep, keep going, keep going, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Yep. A little bit of drivers, driver side. Yep. Drive it. Yeah, you're right. Keep it going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoa. Keep going. Woo! I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> can you smell it in the car? <laughs> I can smell it in the clutch. I can hear it in your voice. Oh, like, man. <laughs> but I can see you were equal, 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 and I knew you had to come down. I oh, know, but in, in, in these particular vehicles, it's just the biggest mental game. Let's get you to the top. Yeah. Don't let the cat out of the bag just yet. No. Let's keep going. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, 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 you're all right. Oh, crikey, keep going. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Keep coming, keep coming. A little bit of passenger, bit of passenger. She's gonna come down soon. Hopefully on the wheels, not on the roof. No! Go back ever so slightly on that line. And let's just try and pop you up. Have a go from there, just have a little pop. Have a little bit that way. Yep. You'll get this, you'll get this. Go back a bit. Okay, give it a pop from there. Well done, well done. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Okay, towards me. Yep. On that line, on that line. Beautiful, keep coming. Keep it to towards you, towards you, towards you. I think that's stiff for a springer. It's just struggling. Jeez, you've got so, you're so close. You're on a really good line there. Can you go back a fracco? Just like I'm talking... 10 centimetres so you can bump up. Holy balls, that is your line, hey. If you can just get, it's your, it's your back, it's your back passenger, I need you to come up. If you can pop it up that, you're up. Okay, go a little bit of passenger now. Yep, 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 yep. Now to me, now to me. To me, to me, to me, to me, passenger. Yep, you're up. Whoa! <laughs> keep going, keep going. You have to drive it a bit. Keep going. Yep. Get, keep driving, keep going, keep going. Get my up. Whoa! <laughs> Given that I've spent so much time in the old D-Max and I know what it's capable of on tough tracks like this one, it made it a no-brainer that I'd jump behind the wheel of the Ranger as opposed to the 79. Rightio, folks. Off-road ability. <laughs> well, the big Land Cruiser, you yep. know, the lack of flex does not help. No, it doesn't help no. at all. <laughs> doesn't help at all. The, the, the height of them, the center of gravity mm -hmm. just isn't there. Spring hangers? Spring hangers, there's, yeah. Picks up wheels. Yeah, this does have, like, they come with twin locked. Yep. Which is a massive bonus. Let's go with the Ranger. You didn't drive it, but you have through some tough tracks. It, yep. Look, it's not built for it. No. But at no point through that track did I ever feel like I was sketchy. No, that that thing just looked as safe as houses, mate. It really was. Nice and it. flat and smooth. Rear diff lock, as yep. standard. Push you through everything. Pushes you through everything. The suspension soaks everything up. Yep. And I knew that if I did get to a point where it was going to get a bit hairy, I could stop it. It was so much easier with yep. the auto. The auto makes the biggest difference. Huge. Yeah. The manual, mm -hmm. there's, so, there's not as much control. Yep. Which, and then every clutch is different as well. So. 100%. Yep. Getting used to it. <laughs> yep. Getting used to it. Okay, we've driven the tough stuff, but let's be honest. If you're buying one of these rigs, chances are you aren't building it to drive glass house tracks. You're looking to set it up to go touring to Cape York around your local area, or even around Australia. So, let's now look at the Ranger and the 79 as it comes to touring capability. We're jumping behind the wheel of these cars, really thinking about which one we would build up to tackle Cape York. Here we go, big 79 line. First up, first and foremost, I mean, it's a high vehicle. You kind of feel skinny and high, like you've got to worry about your centre of gravity. I'll tell you what, one thing you notice about the old Land Cruiser, solid axle, bigger wheels, helps. But you do feel every bump. This one's been significantly modified, new seats, the interior, this is a new steering wheel even. In fact, as I look around the interior of this vehicle, I reckon I'd say half of it, if not more, is not Toyota. That's an additional expense if you want to make it even half as comfortable as the Ranger. That said, I know I can get in this vehicle and drive around Australia into the harshest, most remote, most challenging and most difficult country in Australia tomorrow and zero will go wrong. This is the sort of car that you want when you are on those remote touring, you know, tracks. Give River Road, PDR, things like that. One thing about the Land Cruisers, 
the big V8 diesel under there, so it does make a lot of fun. This is a driver's car. You've got to change gears, you've got to do it gently. You've got to know where your rev range is. You've got to match that to the, what you're driving on, the surface you're driving on, the terrain you're driving on. You come back down hard into the gears as you go around a corner on a dirt road. Kind of feels like a driver's car. Not in any way sporty, but very agricultural. You feel like you could put a few bales of hay on the back of this bad boy and the old trailer with the dog in the back, and you could do it for the next 50 years. That, I like. Something about this Ranger is just how you feel connected, you feel sort of grounded on these dirt roads. Like I feel like I can take these corners a lot quicker than I could in the 79. That big V6 power too, you can just put your foot into it and get yourself out of a corner as well. It just feels lovely on outback gravel. This wild truck is an absolute dream to drive. It's made for this sort of backcountry road driving, a little bit of off-roading as well, but it's super smooth, super comfortable. You've got the auto, Plenty of power. There is a lot going on in here. A lot of technology, a lot of mod cons going on. I can see the tyre pressures here, how fast it was in front of me. Uh, there's sensors all around it. Let's take Cape York. A lot of water crossings, some of them exceptionally deep. Is this gonna make it? Or is one of those sensors gonna get water in it, trigger the computer, throw an error code, and put me in limp mode? I don't know, I don't know, maybe it won't. Maybe they're really good, I don't know. Why don't I know? Because this model is unproven. We don't know. We haven't taken it to Cape York. We haven't done a Simpson crossing with it. It hasn't done the Kimberley yet. 79, it's done all those things for the last 50 years. <laughs> done them well. Right here, folks, this is what it's all about. Practicality as a full-time touring vehicle. Yep. Big 79, got it in spades. Yeah, Hit absolutely, me. all day, every day. Yep. Remote touring, you know, you've got your yeah, access to spare parts, readily available yeah. all over the country. That's a big one. Yep, it's proven. Comfort. Massive you've got to spend a lot of dollars to, to get, get it to where it needs to be. They're big and heavy, they come heavy. Yep. And then to throw in the mix, you've got the big thirsty V8. The brakes aren't that great. <laughs> what brakes? Not an auto? No. Manual? Yeah, that's another thing. Ford Ranger. Biggest one is they're a brand new car. Unproven. Unproven. I think that's a big one. Yep. Getting parts in remote areas for an absolutely brand spanking new car yep. could be an issue. Yep, you, got, biggest you don't con. have that with a Land Cruiser. You're never going to have that with a Land Cruiser. No, no way. That's probably their biggest con. Yep. Is there a brand new vehicle? You've got 3,000 sensors around this vehicle. Yeah, well, when we were doing the, the oh. track there, the <laughs> things <laughs> going off everywhere. <laughs> it's not a bad thing though, the technology. It can also be a positive. Yeah, long drives on the highway, this thing is an absolute dream Gorgeous. to drive. Gorgeous. It's so smooth, so nice. Let's not forget too that with a lot of these problems that you might have, if you carry a scan gauge of some sort, yep. you can clear them quite easily. Yeah. Look at an old diagnose diesel. Them. Yeah, diagnose them and yep. at least be able to call and say, I've got E31 happening. Yeah. Oh, that's just a dirty air cleaner. Yep. Whereas with an old diesel, you might need to know a bit about mechanics to, in order to fix these things. Exactly. So sometimes the technology does look after you. Yep. Mate, this thing is absolute luxury, isn't it's it? Ridiculous. It's isn't nice it? It inside. Really is. It's all <laughs> and it's all dark and you yeah. sit in there with that nice steering wheel. Yeah, the highway just, driving with this is second to none. As far as off-road touring packages go, what are, the, what are the dimensions? What are we talking here? The big 79 versus this? Yeah, so we're running a 1765 tray, Yep. 1500 canopy. Yep. On the Land Cruiser, the lengths are the same, lengths and widths. Ah. The only difference is the, the height of the canopy, 110 mil extra okay. height. So whatever you're putting on the back of your vehicle, exactly the same. Yep. For all intents and purposes. It is, yeah. Which means that whatever you're putting in here is exactly the same as a 79. Absolutely. Significantly bigger vehicle, carrying exactly the same stuff. Yeah, and only marginally a little bit more weight. There's virtually zero difference to the 79 when it comes no. to touring. No, no. Yeah, I agree with you there. Righto, for some people, touring might mean tackling, heck, the thousand dollar track in Tasmania. For others, it might mean hooking up the van, getting the family in the back, and hitting the road less traveled. So to test out just how both these rigs are gonna go doing just that, we have got ourselves a Maverick Hybrid. We're gonna go for a bit of a drive. You know, I've had the good fortune over the last 18 months or so to be doing a lot of towing across, well, very, very terrain around Australia. So towing has sort of become my thing, I guess you'd say at the moment. So I'm really keen just to see how the Ranger goes. First of all, what I'm noticing is takeoff's fine. I'm going up a bit of a steep hill here. Still plenty more if I put my foot down. This auto is bloody beautiful. Close it nicely, put your foot down. Hey, you got plenty of power when you need it. The big one for me though is towing comfort. How does the rear of the vehicle handle having weight that it doesn't normally have applied to the back? 
stays true. Steer straight. Plenty of power, like there is power on tap with this thing. Nice and smooth. Well, that 10 speed gearbox just pulling nicely. It's actually towed really well. We're in the wild track version here, and you got auto braking already built into it as well for the trailer brakes. So that can, you can adjust it, but it works really well. It's a pretty good bonus, I say, in um, a car of this caliber. And there we go, off onto the dirt. You can see the dust billowing up behind me. I feel grounded. I feel like I'm really in touch with the road. I could do this all day. Comfy, assured, yeah. I'm impressed, but I'm gonna save my final judgment, of course, until I've jumped in the big 79. This is a different tow rig. Big 79 with a turning circle of a tank. Attach a caravan on the back. You'd be lucky to turn this around. Oh, crikey, on a football field. Well, the first thing you can definitely notice between this and the Ranger, you know, the manual. I'm a bit of a fan of autos when it comes to towing. Maybe I'm getting old and lazy, who's to say? I just feel they tow a little nicer. You know, a big heavy vehicle like this as well, towing 2.2 ton van. Yeah, on a hill, you, you are always hunting the gears, unfortunately. Same hill we did the Ranger in, I mean third. Could have given it more herb, but yeah, she pulls up there, all right? Certainly sounds nice. See the small little hill? You gotta knock it back in here. It sounds awesome. A little bit doughy on the hills, but that's okay. I probably could drive it harder. Engine braking with the manual. Massively different to the auto. Can really come in under third and let the engine do all the work. Didn't touch the brakes then. Love that. Again, it doesn't have that instant pull, that instant takeoff that the Ranger did. Still in third, working through third. Feels grounded except on the corners. I guess that's the, the wheelbase and the size of this vehicle too. Comfortable though. Could I sit here all day and tow that caravan? Yep, I could. I mean, it feels capable. It feels like it could tow all day long. It's got the power, it's got the torque. Gearbox does like it, I gotta admit, it's a lovely gearbox. Right here, mate, I've been doing a lot of it recently and loving it, I might add, folks. Yep. Towing. The Ranger. 100%. Auto. <laughs> it's, it's, it's right there, isn't it? Straight yeah. up. Yeah. The auto makes such a difference when you're towing. Yeah, you can't beat the auto towing. That said, <laughs> having that engine braking in the yep. 79, I really enjoy that, especially coming down steep hills. You don't have to yeah. rely on your brakes so much. Yep. So that's something for you. One but egg. That auto just makes towing so easy. And yeah. then where's it written? It's written behind you somewhere. Oh, just here. The big V6 in this oh, thing there, yeah. just makes it get up and go. Plenty of power. Yeah, it had it had more get up and go yeah. than the 79. This thing's got all disc brakes all around as well as it yep. just stops on a dime. And sit there with one finger on the steering wheel yeah. at 100 k's an hour with the van behind you, zero if it just go. Yeah. 13 hours in this thing during the day, I'd do it all day over the 79. For me, yeah. this takes it for towing. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> Mate, it has been a huge day. It has. Thoroughly enjoyable, <laughs> I might add. We really have put these two vehicles to the test. Stressful at some times. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit puckering every yeah. now and again. <laughs> Mate, last words, what do you got? Let, let's hear it for the 79, what do you reckon? 79, I don't like the manual. They're big and heavy, mm -hmm. but you got the reliability, they're proven, things like that. That's a big, big pro. That's massive. Yep. Ranger? It's not proven. Sure. Auto, the best. Yep. Low center of gravity, yep. be much better off the off-roading. Yep. Towing though, can't beat it. Mate, what I'm about gonna, you? I'm gonna mirror that, I'm gonna mirror that. You can't beat that Land Cruiser pedigree out in the bush. No, you can't. Full stop. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it there because that for me outshines every single con yeah. that comes with a 79. Yeah. As for the Ranger, comfort, So it's power, a beautiful car to drive. Everything about it just yeah. screams loveliness except it doesn't have that pedigree. Yeah. And as they sit there, probably what, similar, Money. Similar everything. But out of the package, yep. you get the Ranger. So you, you yep. do have to spend a lot of money. To do the same thing with the 79. Yeah. We could go on for hours, mate. But oh, the yeah. thing is, folks, it is time for us to make a decision once and for all. As far as outback, town, beach, touring across the board goes, what's it going to be? I'm taking the Ranger. <laughs> right here. That's it. Yeah, I, I thought you would. It sort of suits you really well. Yeah. It's a beautifully set up vehicle and yeah. it just works. Yep. But 
it doesn't have that Land Cruiser pedigree. It and doesn't. most of my touring is super remote. Yeah. And I need to know that it's going to get me there and get me back. Yeah. So I'm going to go. Do I have to say this like to 50,000? <laughs> Do I have to really say Mate. this? I'm going the 79. I think the 79 makes yeah. the better touring vehicle at this point. Yeah. We've proven dual cab utes can be reliable tourers. It just comes down to trust in the engine and driveline. I trust my D-Max to get me to some of the most remote places in Australia, but the Ranger just isn't there yet, and spare parts will be very hard to source for quite some time. Folks at home, I wanna know, what would you pick if I could hand you the keys right now and you could take them, they're yours, what would you pick, 79 or Ranger? Put the comments down below. You know it's not gonna be hard to pick, mate. Cheers. Woodford Pub is just no, that way. Oh, <laughs> let's get down there. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Catch yep. you next time. Let's go, mate. Yeah, let's get out of here. You're going the wrong way. Oh. You should go this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to walk to the Woody Pub. <laughs>